What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of FTB Inventions. Oh, yeah, guys. So last episode, we started hooking up our blast furnace over here in our uh, coal coke oven. Our coke oven is what it is. Yep. And I have kind of <laughs> basic automation. It's not even automated at all. I put a hopper up here with some glass bottles. The glass bottles are feeding down into here. And then all the creosote that is being... Uh, made from the coal coke is being put into the the bottles these only stack to 16 now i tried putting a hopper underneath this thing and i was going to pull out uh the creosote oil the problem is the hopper will pull out all the creosote and then it'll start pulling up the coal coke and then that just doesn't work the way i want it to so we're doing this manually i just take the bottles of creosote out and then i right click them onto this cache this is from thermal expansion it's a pretty cool machine uh, yeah, it can hold up to 10,000 items and it's fairly inexpensive. It's just like one plank and then four pieces of tin. So it's not bad at all. Uh, so yeah, we're doing, uh, the creosote storing manually. If it gets 16 here, it'll still fill up here. We can hold 64 buckets. So you got a little bit of time before it actually is going to overflow, but I kind of wanted that to be automatic and we don't really have any item filtering kind of stuff. I guess we could have set up some kind of like the vanilla hopper item filtering things, but I felt like that was way over complicated for what we're doing here. So our blast furnace has done a bunch. In fact, I got some steel right here in my inventory that I just cleaned down from this thing a little bit ago. So we got 39 and we got eight more coal Coke to produce into more, uh, steel, I guess to produce more iron into steel. So yeah, this is cool. This is still running. Um, so I was thinking what we should do today to start off the episode, we should start going down that rabbit hole like we were looking at before and actually getting all the little bits and pieces made so we can get to the industrial grinder. I think we should have just about everything made except for a part here and there. Uh, so these are all the parts that I just got done making up. Uh, we need all of these different bits and pieces here for making like a magnetizer. Let's go ahead and start doing this. So we need a magnetizer from Industrial Craft 2. That won't click in there, so we will do this manually. I believe it's like that, and let's, I got the, oh, yeah, 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 that and should be six redstone. Okay, so magnetizer, I got a list of like the ingredients on my other screen that I'm kind of looking at and referencing. So we need an electrolyzer. So we need not this one, we need the IC2 version. So that is some copper cables, empty cell, machine casing, electronic circuit. We got everything there. That shift clicked in just fine. We also need an extractor. We already have one of these machines set up over here, right here. But yeah, we need one that's going to go into this other machine. So we got to build a second one. So that's some tree taps, electronic circuit, basic casing, done. Got it. Okay, so those are the three pieces that will go into the industrial electrolyzer. This one right here. This is a tech reborn machine. So then we also need two advanced circuits and then four steel plates, or I guess refined iron plates. Uh, when we put steel into the metal former on the rolling, you get the refined iron plates, but that is just like a steel plate. It's the same thing. Okay. So we got this thing done. Uh, let's go ahead and do this one. And there's an industrial electrolyzer. Awesome. So we got a little bit of stuff left over here, but yeah, we got that part done. Uh, we actually need to make ourselves a pump and an advanced machine casing let's actually look at the recipe for the industrial grinder so in order to make this we need the pump the advanced machine casing two more advanced circuits and then these whoop, i guess we're going to do the diamond ones so that's four steel and then four diamond dust we can go ahead and uh smash up some diamonds here that's not a big deal cook up a little bit more iron i'm trying to go through <laughs> the different ores and stuff like that that we've already mined here, trying to process them all. All right, so, oh, the macerator is going to take a minute, isn't it? I keep forgetting that we don't have any of the overclocker upgrades for these machines. I really would like to get those going. I'm not sure. Let's take a look. I'm not sure if those have exchange value. They don't. That's too bad. Do any of these bits and pieces in here do? Uh, no, that's too bad. So we're going to have to make all of this stuff, either get it like auto-crafted or something like that. In order to make these overclocker upgrades, these are the things you put into these machines and they make them go that much faster. Okay, so we're halfway done with that. I guess I'm just going to go ahead and move on to another item while we wait for that. So the pump, uh, we need more empty cells. So that is 10. 
turn it into a plate, and then you take that plate, and then you put it through, I think it's the extruding mode, and you get these empty cells, so that's pretty easy to do. We need the mining pipe, which is iron plates, and then another tree tap. I think we had enough here, and then... How many iron plates was that again? We needed <laughs> six iron plates. Oh, man. Okay, so there's six. Uh, that should be... I don't know why that they garnered whatever just went into my inventory. Yeah, we'll garnet get back in there. All right, so we have that. We can put this on extruding. Do this. We should get three of the empty cells. Cool. And then we need, yeah, six iron plates for this. That's going to give us eight of these mining pipes. So that's pretty cool. So we won't have to worry about that. But yeah, the rolling... It's going to take a minute. So what else can we do here? What about the advanced machine casing? All right. So we're going to have to start working on this stuff here. So we need the the coal, pulverized coal. So four goes into one of these. So we need eight for one of these raw carbon mesh. And then we have to compress it. We don't have a compressor yet, I don't think. Do we? I don't think we have a compressor. All right. So we need another machine. Let's look at a compressor. Uh, I guess we could do the, no, no, the implosion compressor that requires like the machine casing. That's a multi-block structure. I think we want the IC2 compressor. So that's an electronic circuit, basic machine casing, eight more iron. <laughs> yeah. Everything in this costs a lot. All right. We'll put the, Oh, it's nighttime. I didn't sleep. Skeleton. Did you really just come all the way over here to say hello to me? Then we got a spider. I should probably do something like this to keep creepers out. Let's go ahead and sleep. Ah, uh, yep. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention to the time. That could have been really bad. Okay, so we got... Oh, that's so going to take a minute for this to happen. Well, I tell you guys what. Let me just go ahead and cut here. I'm going to get a few more of these machines and parts made, and we'll be right back. Oh, my goodness, guys. So I've been at this for a little bit now. We made ourselves a compressor over here, and I am in the process of making coal dust and turning it into the raw carbon fibery and turning that into the raw carbon mesh. So then we can take the raw carbon mesh and stick it in the compressor over here and turn it into these carbon plates. We only needed two, but I did an entire stack of coal into our macerator over here. So I figured we might as well just go ahead and process all of that stuff into these for later uh, since they don't have EMC or I guess exchange value is what it's called in ee3 okay so we got that cooking up over here in the middle former we got six iron plates we need to make ourselves some uh the advanced alloys so you do that by making mixed metal ingots in previous packs you had to do this recipe right here in a rolling machine in this pack you can just do it in shaped ic2 crafting which is pretty nice so i made up four of these we only needed two but that's fine We'll have extras for next time. So we needed two advanced alloys, which is that mixed metal ingot sent through I, the compressor. Actually, let's double check real quick before I do something here. Yeah, the compressor. I right, said so this thing needs to hurry up and stop compressing. There it is. All right, so we'll put, not those, we'll put those in here. Uh, the, unfortunately, the compressor does take a minute. So it's going to take just a little bit for us to get those. But we should have everything else complete. I do have our pump. The industrial electrolyzer, our diamond grinding heads, three advanced circuits, and we have our basic machine casing, our carbon plate, and we will soon have the uh, advanced alloys to make our advanced machine casing. Yep, and then once we have that done, we should have everything together to make the industrial grinder. Okay, so there's two of those. Okay, we should be able to do everything now, so that's pretty awesome. Let's do this and that. There's the advanced machine casing. And finally, there's our industrial grinder. That only took about a year. Well, it's only the fourth episode of the series. It's not that long, to be honest. It's just an involved crafting process. Okay, so now that we have the industrial grinder, we can't do anything with it. I know. It's pretty awesome. But no, but seriously, we need to make ourselves a multi-block structure for this thing to work on. And uh, I'm trying to remember what it was. I was thinking... Yeah, it's uh, three by three of the standard machine casing. So let's look this up. I was trying to look at my notes to figure out what we needed to do. So we need standard machine casing. We're going to need 18 of these. We're going to need two three by threes. And then we're going to need eight reinforced machine casing. This is so much iron that goes into this. So 
Uh, if we needed 18 of those, we're going to need four recipes, right? No. Six recipes? Math is hard. <laughs> well, if we had four recipes, that'd be 16. So we're going to need five recipes. So five times six, five times eight. It's a lot of iron we need for all of this stuff. And then also the electronic circuits. Yep. Uh, that's going to be a lot of rubber, a lot of copper, some redstone, more iron plates. It's all going to be pretty expensive. So let's look at the reinforced machine casing. So this is one that we need eight of. So we're going to have to do this twice. So this is two advanced circuits, two advanced machine casings. Good thing I made up these extra stuff. So I'm going to have to make more of these. Yep. Uh, and then we're going to need some steel plates. We only have to do this recipe twice, but it is a little bit more expensive so yeah, uh, it's going to take a minute to get to where we need to be. I need to make more of those mixed metal ingots and they can press them down to advanced alloys. We're good on the carbon plates, but yeah, it's going to be a lot of iron that we have to process through there. In fact, they should take this almost full stack of iron and stick it through here and just start turning them all into metal plates. All right. Well, I guess it's going to be a little bit longer than I was expecting uh, before we're going to be able to get this done. Uh, so anyway, let me go ahead and get some more stuff done here, guys, and we will be right back. Whew. All right, guys. So we got all of that crafting knocked out. Oh my goodness. Remember all that steel we had? Yeah, we're down to 11 now. Not that much anymore. So <laughs> it's taken quite a long time to get all these different bits and pieces together, but I'm pretty sure we have everything the way it needs to be. So we're going to set up our uh, industrial grinder over here. The problem is we're going to need a lot of power to power this thing. And we got to figure out what we're going to do for that, but we'll figure that out here in a moment. So there is standard machine casing. And then we need reinforced machine casing in the center. I believe I saw that I need water in the center of this. I think that's true. And then we have to do like that. Okay. So it doesn't form a multi-block structure, but what should happen when we place this down is this should say that it has, oh, it says it's missing multi-block. Uh-oh. Now the question is, can I break the standard machine casing with a pickaxe or does that turn into something else? I think we can just break these. So it might just be that the water in the center is incorrect. Uh, I don't think it has to be solid in the center. Okay, we're going to try a few things here and see if we can get this right. Oh, okay. So no water in the center. Maybe I was incorrect. Maybe it's the water has to go into this machine. Ah, uh, that might be it. That might be it. Okay, so if I right-click a bucket of water in here. Oh, you can take the water back out too. <laughs> okay, uh, right-click on here. Yeah, we do have an internal tank. So we needed some bauxite and then we need to power this thing. All right, so let's figure out, well, I guess let's get some bauxite ore. We'll stick it in there for now. Uh, bauxite, 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 this stuff. Yeah, we'll just go and grab all of that and we'll stick that in the machine. It doesn't have any power, so obviously nothing is gonna happen just yet. I should probably also get a little bit of more water in here and fill this tank completely full. Uh, all right, so we got everything set up except for the power situation. So that's the next thing we got to figure out. Uh, we were talking about doing the water wheels before, and I think we're still going to do that. Uh, there's also a power converter mod in here. I think the uh, immersive engineering, I was going to say applied energistics. I think the immersive engineering power cables do convert between RF and EU. But the last time I tried that, it was acting kind of funny. So I don't know. I don't know. We might just go ahead and do like this stuff, depending on how expensive these are. We need diamond kinesis pipes around a block of redstone. Okay. So the way the power converters work, you need the energy bridge and then you need an input side and an output side. So we would need a consumer. So we consume energy. Uh, I guess we would have like a RF consumer. So we'd be taking in RF and then we need a EU producer. We don't need HV, like an LV producer would be fine. That only outputs 32. So you'd probably want like an MV or something like that, 128. Uh, what else do we have here? We have 512 for the high voltage. That might be another thing. But either way, we can't quite do this stuff just yet. looks like this is going to be a little expensive. The energy bridge we were just seeing here requires these diamond kinesis pipes which I guess you get eight of those for two diamonds and glass and then a piece of redstone. I guess we need eight redstone for all of those and then another block. So it's not super expensive. Let's check out how much the RF 
consumer cost. That is a capacitor bank and some gold. Or we could do the thermal expansion recipe down here. Is there anything else we can do? Okay, so you can also put the producer in your crafting grid and get the consumer and vice versa. So it's only one recipe for either. Then you can just convert them back and forth. Uh, the capacitor bank, we would have to get into Ender IO. We don't have any of this stuff done. So we'd probably want to do the thermal expansion, but this is still going to be a little expensive. Lots of copper and stuff like that. I don't know. We might end up just trying the thermal, exp or I'm sorry, the immersive engineering just to start. That might be enough to get us where we need to be. I am not 100% sure on that. But first things first, let's go and grab all of our creosote. And then, we, whoops, I didn't mean to click on there. Uh, grab all of our creosote. Put that in there. Yeah, so we got three stacks of 16. We can turn some of that creosote into treated wood, and we can start looking at making some of the water wheels for the the water wheel. <laughs> All right, so in order to do this, we needed some planks. Let's go ahead and convert some of these wood logs into planks, and then we do this. I have messed that up. It's Okay, still messed that up. Do it. There we go. There's a stack of treated wood. So the water wheel, we need to make three of these if we're going to do this. And that is the water wheel segments. We need four of those. And that is three planks and four sticks per segment. We need four segments per water wheel. We need three water wheels per water wheel unit. And then on top of that, we're going to need the, the kinetic denimo. Yeah, this thing. Which is copper wire, which is four copper and one stick gives you four. So we'd need eight copper, two sticks, and then uh, one piece of iron to make the wire coil, more iron, and redstone. It's not super expensive. Let me go ahead and bust this out real quick. I'll do the crafting for that, and we'll be right back, guys. Oh, my goodness, guys. So I've got some stuff going on over here. You can see I set up three water wheels. Yeah, because the last time I checked... I don't know how much it is in this pack, but the last time I checked the water wheel output, uh, we can get them up to about 88 RF per tick. So that wasn't a whole lot, but it is consistent power. So we might not be using the power for a while and then we'll use a lot of it. Uh, we're also going to want constant power for applied energistics when we get that up and running. So yeah, we have these sitting up here and then I uh, made some leadstone flux ducts. Uh, these only hold 200 RF per tick per connection, I think is what it is. Um, so we have that, we got three of those going down into one single line, uh, that runs underneath the ground here to the center point, And then that runs all the way down over here to right here. Cool. So I made myself some, uh, immersive engineering wire. So we're going to attach the LV wire connector to the leadstone flux duct. And that should convert it from RF to EU, I do believe. So that's what we're gonna do over here. Now, the reason why I'm not using immersive engineering wires from the water wheels all the way over here is because they have a power loss. After 16 blocks, they lose like 5% or 10% of the power. It's not good. Uh, this is a lot further than 16 blocks. So really don't wanna mess with that. But for something like this, where we're just connecting these directly to a machine, this should be just fine. So we can go and pop off this block so we can kind of see what I'm doing a little bit easier here. Uh, let's put some blocks underneath me right there, right there. And we will put that right like that. Cool. All right. So we need to put another wire connector right here. Oh, I can't reach it. Just tearing up the entire floor here, trying to get the stupid thing on there. All right. We'll put the wire connector right there. Yeah. You can see it attaches just fine. And it does say zero out of 256 RF. Does it say that? Oh, okay. It says that no matter what it's connected to. I thought it might have been change specific because it's attached to a flux duct. Okay, but anyway, we just need to take this wire coil, right click, right click, boom, connected, done. All right, so we got RF and we're converting that to EU specifically for this machine. Uh, we don't have the water wheels hooked up yet. We're going to do that together here in just a second. I just built out the frame for them. Uh, all right, so this, doot, doot, doot. And I need one more block right there. Perfect. Okay, you can't even tell anything's going on. This machine should be fully powered. Yeah, once we get our water wheels up and running, which is going to be pretty awesome. All right, so the water wheels, I'm using quite clear glass. I got some regular vanilla glass. I exchanged it. And then you can use a chisel to chisel vanilla glass into quite clear glass. I went with this because you can't see any of the nasty vanilla textures. It's quite clear, <laughs> literally. All right, so we got 
everything should be set up here. Uh, we're going to need some water. I don't have that hooked up. Um, should probably grab... Is there a water... So well, I guess there's a river over here. I was going to say we should probably grab something like an infinite spring. I'll go ahead and set one of those up here right now. Yeah, uh, should have gotten one of those together earlier, but I didn't. It would be nice if we had something in this pack that you could do like an automatic, uh, like a never ending bucket. I know we have, we've had mods like that in the past. I can't remember what that was like Requiem or something like that. It had like the, the golden chalice, I think might've been what it was. Yeah. You can just keep right clicking and place the source blocks. I wish, well, there might be that in this mod pack. I haven't actually looked at every single mod that's in here. All right. So anyway, uh, we're going to do that, 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 yeah, we need to get up here. We have to place water into the top and it's got to run over the thing. Oh man, I'm going to have to get back down here to get another source block. So yeah, the way we're doing this is the center point is right here. We're putting the water one block off centered and it's going to be running from this side all the way down there and it should hit the ground and then go underneath. Let's go ahead and go down, take a look at it. Yeah. So it goes over the water wheel down, hits this point. In fact, this row of blocks right here could be solid. Uh, and then it goes underneath. So we got two more blocks right here, and we're going to put a water source block right above flowing away. And we're going to do the same thing up here, a water source block flowing into it. So that increases the output a little bit. It's kind of hard to explain if you've never seen it before. So I'm going to stop explaining it because <laughs> it probably won't make much sense to you guys. Uh, all right, so we'll do that. Do that. I'm going to do this so i can make an infinite source up here there we go all right so we got some water going like that the water wheel is going to stop which is fine we don't we don't really need that going right at the second uh all right so we get rid of this block here we need water flowing into it grab one right there that should be an infinite source now i am just going to put get a piece of dirt so i can get up and out of there all right, that's infinite source. So that those three source blocks are running into the water wheel here. It doesn't spin it very fast like this, but it will help out the total uh, RF production per tick that this thing can make when everything's going. Okay, so we got that set up here. Cool, so that's kind of what it's looking like now. Yep, and if it's not spinning as fast as you think it should be, it's usually a visual glitch like logging out of the game, logging back in, usually solves those kinds of things. Um, yeah, I don't really have, well, I guess I got a little bit of glass. I was going to say, I don't really have glass on me to show you guys, uh, this change here, but we should probably just put these in here anyway. So we're going to do this and this, going to get rid of those. Get that quite clear glass on the bar. I'm in here and there, there, there. Okay. So the water goes down onto this block and then over. So it's touching a little bit more of the water wheel there. Like so. All right. So that should be a little bit more efficient. Okay. And then we're going to put some water sources on top of the clear glass block right in there flowing away from it. All right. So let's get that done. This should be pretty easy to do. Water there. Water's flowing everywhere, but we'll be fine. All right. So we got that and we just need to pl place one more. Uh, uh, maybe I should place a block here so I can stand on it. We'll place one more source block right here. That'll turn into an infinite spring. So we should have three source blocks in there. All right. So there we got that flowing away from the water wheel now. Cool. So that should be maximum efficiency for the immersive engineering water wheel. I'm going to go ahead and do this on the other two of these things. So we should have three of them going maximum efficiency. Cool. So let me go ahead and get to that and we'll be right back guys. All right, guys. Well, I just got back from the nether. I went to the nether to go and try and find some sulfur, right? So after I was in the nether digging around, I got some nether quartz and some glowstone, some redstone, a gas spawn actually. And I was able to shoot the fireball back at it. And I got the uh, return to sender achievement. So that was kind of cool. Uh, but anyway, yeah, after we did that, I realized, oh, hey, sulfur has an exchange value. And so does nether quartz. And nether quartz is 256. And I think the sulfur is 32. So let's go ahead and do some of this, but we need the sulfur, uh, for reasons. <laughs> uh, let me go ahead and get some of this stuff real quick. 
let me just use the rest of this all right so we have eat sulfur great uh so we got everything hooked up over here uh at our water wheels yeah so everything's hooked up over here we get the power running over to this machine and the machine is not receiving power at all so uh my thought on this and i've seen this before the immersive engineering will convert uh rf to eu but it's like you have to put that eu into like a bat box or whatever and i was looking at the recipe for this before doing the bauxite into the titanium tiny piles of titanium it says it needs like 200 eu per tick or something so anyway uh or maybe it was 100 yeah bat box would only do 32 the cesu i think is what it's called uh, does 128 so this would be more than sufficient for that so i wanted to make one of these it's a lot of bronze copper and these advanced re batteries these require sulfur so this is why i was in the nether looking for sulfur and then i realized that yeah these do have an exchange value of 32 so we can exchange nether quartz for that so i mined up some nether quartz so i think i should have, should have pretty much everything ready to go actually you know what I lied. We don't have any of those copper cables ready to go. Let me go ahead and grab some of these copper ingots. I don't know how many we need. We'll put six in here into the uh, extruding mode. We'll get those going. And I should have a little bit of rubber, I do believe. Yeah, I smelted up a stack of this a little bit ago as well. Okay, so we can empty out our inventory for these things that we don't need at the moment. Uh, yeah, another rack we don't need. Okay, I think we should be good. Yeah, and I made myself a wrench. We're going to have to wrench that CESU when we place it down there. Because things in IC2 don't really work the way you think they should. Uh, but anyway, we got the copper cables that we need. We should have everything else. Uh, well, hold on. Two, four, six. And then we needed one more. So, in fact, we don't have all that we need. But doing this definitely should now. Okay, cool. So, let's go ahead and make the three of these. There's that. And then we needed the bronze plates. We should have five more. And we should have everything in our inventory to make this thing. However, since these things have, um, I guess, a power bar or something, they don't shift click in there. So you got to manually place them in. So there's a CESU. So hopefully our immersive engineering wires are going to work the way I think they should work and power this thing. And this thing should be able to power our industrial grinder. We're going to find all this out here in just a second. All right. So let's get some room going on down here. We'll remove this one that one cool all right so we'll place the cesu like this that's gonna have the little dot down we want the little dot up so you have to make a wrench and you shift click on this side and that flips it around reverse so the dot is now facing upwards trust me on that all right so now we can just do the lv wire here and one to there and then this thing from here to here and i don't see anything happening <coughs> uh is this thing getting power no so why is this not working there is something wrong with the power conversions maybe it might be that immersive engineering in this pack does not auto convert from rf to eu and all of this stuff and we might actually have to do the power converter mod like we were looking at earlier do we have the stuff to do this we might be able to do this so we needed that we needed an rf consumer Oh, you know what? We're going to have to get into the Ender IO stuff. Uh, well, those aren't bad, but we need the energetic alloy. And this is stuff that we don't have. We don't have an alloy smelter. We don't have an arc furnace. So that's going to be near impossible. Well, I think we're probably going to have to put this on hold until next time. We'll look at getting some of the Ender IO machines going. Uh, I guess I could do a little test in creative mode and see if, in fact, the immersive engineering cables are not working the way I think they should. Uh, we might have to put that into something else. I guess it could also check the configs for the immersive engineering. Just double check that it still has EU power available. All right, tell you what, let me do one quick little check and we'll be right back. All right, guys, so I'm looking at the configuration for immersive engineering. Sure enough, there's an option that says set this to false to prevent wires from accepting and outputting EU and the option is set to false. So yeah, we cannot convert from RF to EU using immersive engineering wires which is fine we'll use the power converter mod but like i said we don't have the thing set up right now in order to do that we're gonna have to get into some ender io machines ah, one thing to another to another but that's fine guys that's fine that's what these packs are all about we're getting ourselves all teched up 
We're getting the infrastructure set up. Things in the future will be a lot easier when we already got machines and all of this stuff ready to go. So anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of Feed the Beast Inventions. I hope you guys liked the episode. Remember to leave a like on it if you did, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.